So today what we're going to do is go through the different EQ options and compressor options that are on the quad cortex. And to work on this, I've created a simple preset. I'm using a Lone Star Clean here into a 2x12 cabinet, a little bit of reverb on the back end, and then I'm using a capture I created of a Victory Jack preamp pedal as kind of an overdrive pedal in front of it. So here's what the Lone Star sounds like on its own. And if I give the Jack preamp, it sounds like this. So we'll leave that off for now. So let's start with the different EQ options. And there's four available. There's the graphic nine, the low high cuts, the parametric three and the parametric eight. So let's start with the graphic nine. So let's go ahead and turn this on. So this is the one to me that's most like an EQ pedal that you would have on a guitar pedal board. You can see here we've got our nine frequency ranges. Plus we have a high pass filter, so you can use this to cut off some of the low frequencies if you want. And then you have a output so you can boost it as well. So typically I would use this kind of on the front end of the preset and you would use this to kind of do a mid boost. Think of like, for example, when I did the Clapton preset and I wanted that kind of mid boost on the front to mimic what the guitar mid boost was doing, I used this. And what we did there is we just you know, we pushed the 500 hertz range, maybe gave a little bit of the lower and upper, not a lot. And then we boosted the output. And so that takes us from to this. You know, if you've got some gain in front of there. So pretty straightforward. It's all about kind of what frequencies you want to boost here. So that, that clapped in, you're going to boost around a 500 hertz. If you want more of a tube screamery kind of thing, you'd be using a 1K hertz. You can also use this to scoop your sound if you want to. There's a lot of options here. Any way that you could use kind of one of those old school EQ pedals on a pedal board, that's how you would use this one. So that one's pretty straightforward. The parametric ones are kind of work the same, it's just how many different, you know, EQ points you want to deploy. So the three one obviously has three points you can use. And for each one, you pick a type. So typically the lower one, you can do a low shelf and this higher one would be a high shelf. You could do a low pass on the high one and a high pass on the low one. And in the middle, typically you're on a peak. And then in addition to the type, you've got the gain level, the frequency you want to push, the Q, which we'll show what that is in a second. And then you also have the output for the block overall. So the only tricky part here is kind of what that Q means. And so let's do this. Let's go ahead and we'll do that same kind of Clapton thing here. So we'll do a 500 hertz. We're going to push that by 8 dB. And then the Q, what it's doing is it's shaping the curve. You can see the higher the Q, kind of the steeper the frequency boost. So it's really about how sharply you want to push that particular frequency. So if we keep it kind of low and we can also push the boost here. So again, we can do our kind of clapped in mid boost thing. So, and then each one, you can adjust its frequency. Say, I want this to be more 250, and this one I want to be more down around 2K. You can move those around. You can just, you can drag the dots too if you want. You can move them up and down. And you can see the way the curves respond. So, for instance, this three, if I change that to be a low pass, you can see how it drops off. And so you can affect the overall kind of EQ curve there. Same thing down here. If I change this to be a high pass, you can see it drop off. You can make this a low pass, but you wouldn't, then that negates the two and three, so you would never do that. Low pass is for the uh, EQ point on the end. 
So typically you would leave, leave these low shelf, high shelf, but you might want to do the uh, lower high pass. So that's how the parametric three works. So when you go with the parametric eight, as you can imagine, it works just like the three. You just have more EQ points. And you can see here, you can take away some of the points. So if you look here, five, six, seven, and eight actually aren't deployed. There's only four deployed. I can take away them. One, I can take away two by hitting the X. Or if I'm on five, I can add the plus. So this allows you to do a really flexible EQ and basically kind of do this graphic nine, but do it where you can move the frequencies around. So instead of having 1K, you could have it at say 1200 Hertz, that kind of thing. But you've got your Q again. The Q is, let's go ahead and boost that a little bit so we can see. The Q is doing the same thing as it was before. It's just affecting how it does the curve there. So overall, the parametric three and the eight work exactly the same. It's just with the eight, you get more EQ points to control. To be honest, I've never used the parametric eight. Typically, I will use this on the front. I may use this occasionally, but not as often. Usually, I stick with this one. It's just a little more straightforward and something I'm more familiar with. And then the other piece of EQ is the low high cut. And so what this is doing is this is creating a low pass filter and a high pass filter on your sound. And it's also giving you the slope. So I will say this. I used to use this quite a bit until they added the ability to do low and high cut filters on the IR and cab locks. So if you look over here on the cab lock, you can create high pass filter and low pass filter. And also I'll usually do it here now. So I don't burn a spot in the preset to have an EQ just to do that. So that's something to keep in mind. I typically, yeah, who even leaves this one on? I typically don't use this as much anymore. It does give you a little more control because in addition to the frequency, you have the ability to adjust the slope. The slope is basically controlling how drastic the pass filter drop-off is. So the higher your slope, kind of the steeper the drop-off when it gets to that frequencies. Usually, I will leave it either on 12. I might go to 6 if I want it to be more subtle. Rarely do I ever raise it above 12. So those are the EQ blocks. Let's talk about compression. So so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in this little graph here. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so we can see it maybe. When you're talking about compression, there's a few definitions I think it'll be helpful. And then when we look at the compressors, you can know what each control is doing. So in general, there's the threshold, and then there's the attack time and the release time. And so what that means is the threshold is the is going to be expressed in uh, decibels, like how loud the signal is getting before you start to kind of squish it and compress it. Attack time is how long the compressor takes to compress the signal, and the release time is the opposite. How long does it take to release the signal to its previous kind of structure? And so if we look at this graph here, we can see the input signal is here, and it's, you can see it's above the threshold line. We've set our compressor with a certain amount of attack time, that's this kind of pinkish area, and a certain amount of release time, which is this yellowish area. And then if you look, so what the compressor does is when it detects that the input signal is above the threshold, it starts to compress. And it'll take as long as at the attack time to compress it down to the threshold, and it'll keep it there until it senses that the input signal has fallen below the threshold level, and then it'll start to release the compression, you can see it'll slowly grow here to its kind of pre-compressed state. So when we're looking at the compressors, when you're talking about threshold and attack and release, this is what we're talking about. So let's slide that out of the way. And the other thing I want to talk about is ratio. Ratio is actually kind of like slope was for the EQ. It's the severity of the compression once you pass the threshold. So the higher your ratio, the steeper the compression or the more immediate the compression. So you can see here by the graph, we've got our threshold as the upper level passes the threshold, 
If your ratio is one to one, there's no compression going on. That's what it would continue on, this kind of yellowish line. The orange line is if your compression was two to one, four to one is more steep and kind of infinite is once you pass the threshold, it just cuts it off. And so this is to keep in mind too, when you see threshold on these compressors, this is what it's about. It's really about the severity or the steepness of the compression curve. So let's look at some of the compressors. So you can see here, we've got six compressors. Um, and two of them, the Chief CS3 and the Jewel, are to me kind of guitar pedal compressors that you would put in front of the amp. And that's usually where I would use them. I use the Jewel really more than the Chief. And then the other ones come in both mono and stereo. And let me talk to, about that for a second. So a compressor by nature is not a stereo effect. The difference between a mono and a stereo compressor is just whether it maintains the stereo signal coming into it. So, for example, if you run a stereo signal into a mono compressor, it's going to compress it like usual, but the signal coming out will be mono rather than keeping a, kind of that stereo spread. So, you know, if we're doing like a ping pong delay and then it goes through a compressor that's mono, suddenly that delay that was going between left and right is just going to be down the center again. So keep that in mind. So what I've got here is I've got all four of these compressors here. And if I'm using the stereo ones, just as an example. And then up here in front of the amp, I've got the CS3 and the Jewel. So let's start with the CS3. We'll go ahead and turn it on. So let me turn off our distortion so we keep a clean tone. So again, our clean tone without the compressors like this. So when we turn on the compressor, again, sustain here, this is driving the amount of compression. So this is kind of attack and threshold and everything kind of wrapped into one. So we, if we jack this up. You hear, if, if I play quiet without the compressor, Compressor, if I play quiet, it's bringing up the quiet parts, plus it's kind of topping off the top ones. And the attack is like we discussed, this is the amount of attack it's pulling out. So we push that all the way up. Tone is, is an EQ control, so you can kind of darken up the compression a little bit. And then level is, is output. You can hear when we're sustaining, because it's squashing the signal, the volume is going up quite a bit. So sometimes you might want to pull this back if you want to keep it kind of at unity. So that's the, that's the Chief CS3. Um, and it works pretty well. I usually use the Jewel. For this function. And so the Jewel has a little bit different control setup. Um, you have the compression. So this is kind of the sustain, um, and you can control how much compression you want. Again, you've got an EQ setting, so you can darken it up or make it brighter if you want to. Volume, which is just output volume. It does have a high cut capability if you want to turn that on. And then it's got a mix capability. So you can kind of mix the compressed and uncompressed signal together to get a kind of a semi-compressed tone. And I'll actually do this a little bit sometimes on lead tones. What I might do is maybe put compression on six and mix on 60, and then like pull back the EQ a little bit. And I might run this on the front of a lead tone to kind of create an Eric Johnson-y kind of thing to where you're smoothing out the attack, kind of giving a violin kind of attack, and then adding some sustain, allowing some of the legato to sing through. So I really like using the jewel on the front end of patches that way. And this is usually, if I want to do kind of typical compression pedal effects on a preset, this is the one I'm going to use. So let's look at kind of the back end compressors and see these are the ones that I would think of in more kind of your traditional 
rack mount compression studio kind of things. And if we look at this one, we'll start with the Legendary 87, which is the one that I lean on the most for this kind of thing. And so this is the one I use, for example, when I did my video on getting more sag from an amp. This is the one I put in the back to kind of act as that kind of compression so that we could turn up volume on the front and just get the amp to saturate without getting louder. And so some of the names here for the controls are slightly different, but it's the same kind of thing. Input is basically your threshold. So when do I start compressing? Ratio is what we talked about, right? So you can the lower your ratio, the less severe the compression, or you can pump it you know, all the way up to where it's basically just flat. You've got your attack. So this is your attack time. How long does it take for the compression to kick in? You have your release time. Then you have something called makeup. And this is, I think, pretty common on all the compressors. When you compress a signal, because you're pushing down the top end volume sometimes, it can make the signal sound softer and quieter. So the makeup is really, think of it as like a back end boost. And so after it compresses, it'll kind of boost it. In this case, the default is to boost it by 4 dB so that when you compress, you compress the signal, but then you make it a little louder to kind of compensate for your compression. And then this one also has a mix and it just shows you a gain reduction level. So right now, if we, again, if we leave it off, we turn it on, you can hear it's really quiet. So we either would want to reduce the threshold, which will make it a little bit louder. You can reduce the mix, so you can mix in some dry signal. Or what you would do is you would push the makeup. So again, I like the 87. I think it works pretty well. And that's the one I lean on the most. You know, the other ones we have is we have the Opto Compress, we have the Solid State, and we have the VCA. And so these are mimicking different types of compressors. They're all pretty similar in, to me. Um, and they all have very similar controls. We have our threshold. Again, that's the sound level that we kick in the compressor, we have the ratio. Again, that's our kind of steepness of compression. We have the attack time, we have the release time, we have our makeup, which is allows us to control the kind of back end boost to compensate for the drop in volume. And we have the mix. And you can see all of these basically have the same controls. They're slightly different. If you look at the solid state comp, the ratios, just has multiple points rather than, you know, a full dial that you can get it, you know, really um, dialed in. So overall, I think they all sound pretty similar. I have used the Opto Comp a little bit. I don't use the Solid State or the VCA hardly at all. I don't hear much difference in them. They, they do their job. I'm sure that if maybe if you're using these compressors for like vocal compression or something like that through the quad cortex, that these might be more handy because, you know, how you compress a human voice maybe is a lot more different than how you compress a guitar signal. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time comparing what these sound like. Frankly, for guitars, I think I would stick with the uh, 87. And just, this is the one I would use on the back end and on the front end, I use the Jewel. You know, so if you're trying to get like that country kind of spank, you'd put the jewel in front of the amp, you would crank up the compression, uh, crank up the mix, maybe give a little bit more EQ. do like a little country twang or kind of a funky line, something like that, I would use the Jewel. And again, on the back end, 
I'm more apt to use the 87. And this is more for kind of post amp compression. I want to um, control some of the dynamics. You know, when I kick the amp with a, like a tube screamer or something in front of it, and I'm pushing the output of the tube screamer, I want to control the some compression on the back end so I'm not getting a lot louder. I want it to behave more like an amp. So that's what I've used the 87 for. So that was a quick run through the EQs and the compressors. I hope this um, answered the questions that came up and this kind of fit the bill for what you guys wanted to know. If you have any other questions, feel free to throw them in the comments. I'm happy to answer them or even do another video. In the meantime, I will put this preset up on my Cortex Cloud account. Feel free to grab it and play around with it and let me know what you think. And as always, thanks for watching.